And our president, Nana Adodankwe Kufado, together with other African leaders, have cut sword for the construction of a new head office for the Committee of Intelligence and Security Services in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The move is to enable the committee to be assertive and effective in enhancing security on the continent. Insecurity continues to be a bane for the African continent. The continent is currently battling terrorism, cybercrime, drug trafficking, kidnapping, conflict, among others. It is for this reason that the African Union in 2004 established the Committee of Intelligence and Security Services to assist the African Union Commission in making informed decisions to promote security on the continent. But the Commission has operated without a headquarters, hampering smooth flow of day-to-day -day activity. The situation prompted President of Equatoria Guinea, Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasongo, to make an offer of $20 million for the construction of the edifice, with the Ethiopian government giving out a piece of land worth $81 million for the project. President Kufuado supported President Teodoro Obiang Mbasongo in cutting the sword. The African Union Commission for Peace and Security Ambassador Smail Shegui urged for more effort in dealing with security issues on the continent. I'm therefore proud to be associated with this building donated to an African Union institution by an African country which underscores the need for synergy by the government and people of Africa to contribute to strengthening continental institutions. This is a strong step forward towards providing African solutions to African problems. 51 member countries make up members of CISA. Uh, meanwhile, President Okufuado has encouraged African leaders to leave behind an exemplary legacy for the African youth, giving a vote of thanks to end the 28th ordinary session of the African Union in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. That president described the two-day meeting as a landmark due to the number of far-reaching decisions made by the Assembly. The summit, among other things, welcomed Morocco back into the AU after she broke off from the Organization of African Unity, OAU, in 1984. With the acceptance of Morocco into the continent bloc, its membership now stands at 55. The closing ceremony witnessed the swearing into office of the new chairperson of the African Union Commission, Charles Musa Faki Mahamat, and the deputy chairperson, Ambassador Kwesi Kwoti of Ghana. The summit also saw the election of some members to key areas of development, including Commissioner in Charge of Peace and Security and Political Affairs. The other two areas of the Commission, Science and Technology and Economic Affairs, will be voted on in the next session of the AU in July. The immediate past chairperson of the AU Commission, Dr. Nkuzazana Dlamini Zuma, urged member states to unite and work towards ensuring development on the continent. The new AU chairperson, Musa Faki Muhammad, promised to carry out his duties diligently. President Ikufuado urged his colleague heads of state to do well to help implement policies agreed to at the summit so as to meet the aspirations of their citizens. We have taken the equally bold decision to finance our operations from our own resources and wean ourselves of foreign de dependence and charity. The implementation of that decision is necessary for our self-respect. He applauded the Assembly for meeting the deadline of putting into place a program for the establishment of a continental free trade area to boost Africa's chances for self-reliance and economic development. Which will hopefully help realize the enormous potential of our continent and help bring prosperity and dignity at long last to the long-suffering peoples of Africa. If these and other measures are carried out in their letter and spirit, they will indeed mean that this has been a landmark summit, one which will have succeeded in rekindling the values of, quote, unity, solidarity, and cohesion, unquote, 
that have been the founding values of our continental organization. 